Hello, everybody. Today, what I'm going to do is walk you through how to do your own health assessment online and then how to interpret those results when you get to the recommendation screen so that you can best utilize the technology that is at your fingertips. So without further ado, we are going to move on over to the screen share. Okay, so when you get to um, the ID Life screen, <coughs> you will use the direct link of whichever team member you are working with. So you need to go back to your team member and ask them for their direct referral link. When you get to the site, you will click Take Assessment. You should see the person you're working with's name at the top left-hand side of the screen. There is a quick, short less than two minute video that explains the science behind the health assessment and how it works. Feel free to click play and watch that before you start. Then you click take assessment. You're going to begin by putting in your name. And I'm just going to do a sample account right now. Pick your gender. In the case of my sample, I'm going to use a female and then date of birth. And I'm going to use, um, date okay. and then your email this email is going to send you a link so that you can get back to the assessment in case for whatever reason the username and password that you set up doesn't work if we can't get in to do your review with the username and password you send us, we'll need you to forward us this link. You can also put the email of the team member that you're working with and it will directly send them a link. So I always use my email, which is bedrock nutrition info at gmail.com so that I can access them later. <laughs> And it starts with allergies. So these are predominantly allergies that would be either trigger a particular nutrient or remove a particular nutrient from your recommendations. You need to be very careful because um, if you do not have a true allergy, this could block something that you actually very much need. And I see this happen a lot. So if you have seasonal allergies, that is not necessarily a ragweed allergy unless you have had under the skin testing that has come up specific to ragweed. Um, peanut allergies, lactose and, uh, intolerance, fish or fish oil. This does not include shellfish. This is just actual fish and then shellfish is separate. Um, milk protein, this means casein, if you are allergic to casein, um, and then vitamin C, ascorbic acid, <coughs> and then a soy allergy. Again, this is not the same as a sensitivity because when we fix the gut, the food sensitivities go away because of the condition of the intestines, intestinal lining, and gut microbiome. So only do this if there is a true diagnosed allergy through skin prick testing, not blood work, because blood work for allergy testing is not accurate. <clears throat> so uh, my person has no allergies, no true allergies. We're going to move on. Have you had any changes to your vision? This includes, do you wear contacts or glasses? Next, in terms of your biological or family history, your biological relatives, we are only talking about immediate relatives. So by that, parents, grandparents, siblings, and children. That's all that matters. I don't care about your aunts, uncles, and cousins. <laughs> And we're looking here at genetic links. Remember that just because something is genetically linked does not mean it will happen to you. Genetics cannot be expressed without epigenetics. And we'll talk about that more in your one-on-one -on -one review. But um, for the purpose of this, um, in my family, there is cardiovascular disease on my mother's uh, side of the family. And there is type 2 diabetes on my father's side of the family, my dad, my grandmother, um, cardiovascular disease was my grandfather. Okay. Moving on your ethnicity. 
So if there's more than 25%, you know, of American Indian, um, Asian, then you would click that and you can click any combination thereof, Hispanic, Caucasian, whatever. And with that, I want you to understand that what we're looking at is um, issues that run predominantly in certain ethnicities, right? Um, again, that doesn't mean that you are at risk for them unless your lifestyle and diet are such that you put yourself at risk. So every single thing that happens, happens because of the things that we do, not because of our genetics themselves, not because of our families themselves. But it is more that in a family, the dietary um, uh, issues or the, the dietary preferences run through the family. A lot of times culturally, we see dietary preferences, higher carbohydrates, higher sugar, less red meat that lead to health issues. And so we're looking at those underlying things. We won't always use the recommendations in the nutrition for that because we want you to change the lifestyle that causes the problem. But this gives us a good idea of what to look at. You're going to put the state that you live in because we're looking for environmental issues, uh, sun exposure or lack thereof. Um, uh, particular toxins that are environmentally found in particular geographic areas. I'm here in Florida. I'm just going to do that. The season, because again, when the sun sets early, we get less vitamin D. We are able to make less vitamin D because we have less sun exposure. If, um, if seasonally we see particular issues um, we're going to overcompensate nutritionally for those things. So right now we're, he we're in the fall. Uh, it happens to be November right now in my area. That's fall. For some of you, that might be winter. How much direct exposure do you get? To answer this question, think about this time of year that you are in right now, because you're going to change this every 90 days to fit exactly where you are at that moment. This is not stagnant. This evolves throughout the year. It evolves as your health evolves and it must always be kept current. Um, what we're looking at is direct sunlight exposure to a minimum of five parts of your body. That can be your face, your torso, your arms, your legs, where you are not wearing clothing to cover it up or you are not wearing sunscreen because sunscreen blocks the necessary UV light. It is not the sun that is dangerous. It is what we put on our skin that is dangerous. So we want to make sure that you're getting full exposure to the sun for some period of time throughout the day so that you, your body has the opportunity to make adequate vitamin D, which is a hormone that we create. And we create that by utilizing sunlight. So um, right now, because it does get dark earlier, around six o'clock, I don't get as much sun as I normally do. And when we get to genetics, we'll talk about the genetic factors that play into that. But I'm going to say that if I'm working on, a, on an average day, I get somewhere between 20 minutes and an hour of direct sunlight. Now, look at your in-home environmental toxins. Do you use plastic? Do you wear cosmetics? Do you use cologne, fragrances, air fresheners that have fragrances in them? Fragrance laundry detergent, um, commercial dairy products that utilize um, hormones, right? Um, and do you use city tap water? So we're looking at fluoride, chlorine, those types of things. I'm not so worried about meats and cheeses unless you're eating a lot of processed, heavily processed meats and cheeses. Those are the only types that are dangerous. Um, in our house, we don't use plastic. We don't use perfumes or colognes. We have uh, essential oils or essential oil-based fragrances. We make our own laundry detergent, so we don't have access to any of those things. Um, the second one, hair care products. This could be uh, shampoos, conditioners, 
um, styling products that contain harmful chemicals that affect your endocrine system, nail polish, um, wearing unwashed clothing that still has chemicals on it. If you are um, exposed to vehicle exhaust frequently, tobacco smoke frequently, then you would check those. Next, we're going to move to what the area is that you live in. If you live in a city or a suburb, you're going to click major metropolitan area. If you live in a place that is agricultural in nature, like we do, you're going to click, I live near agricultural operations on the bottom. Regardless of whether or not you click one of those two things, if you also use insecticides or pesticides at home or at work or a chemical weed killer or herbicide, you would also check those. Everything we do, we do naturally. We use um, borax, we use uh, essential oils. So we try very hard to keep all of those chemicals out of our environment. Now, I still check the bottom because I can't control what my neighbors do and the runoff from their properties affects our water and our soil. <clears throat> Under professions, what we're looking for here is occupational hazards where you may be exposed to an environmental toxin more regularly. So it could be paint, plumbing materials, welding materials. If you're a mechanic and you work on cars, you're an artist and you paint or sculpt or use <laughs> any kind of solvent. Um, if you manufacture ceramics, if you manufacture electrical components, if you work in a, um, a warehouse or a manufacturing site, plastics, metals for plastics, metals or glass. Um, number two, smelting, glass manufacturing, manufacturing of pesticides, electronics, timber treatment, chemical workers. Number three, mechanics, mining, um, paint manufacturing, electroplating, soldering, welding, uh, handling batteries and plastics commercial fishing, dentistry. So if you are a dental hygienist or a dentist, you would click this last one. Um, mining, pharmaceutics, manufacturing, automotive parts, uh, electrical equipment, chemical processing, coal power plants, waste management, or incineration. And you'll notice that there's overlap. You may click more than one of those. And this has to do with the over... 3,000 toxins that we inhale, we put on our skin, or we are exposed to um, on a daily basis through our environment, our occupation, and uh, our lifestyle. And we talk about those when we talk about the detox box, and we'll talk about those more later. Now, for this question, it says, what are the following reasons you would consider taking nutritional supplements? I want to reframe this. And I want to talk about how many of these apply to you. Do you wish that you could sleep better? Do you wake up and feel not refreshed? Do you not dream? Do you have a hard time falling asleep? Do you have a hard time staying asleep? Do you wake frequently throughout the night? If you said yes to any of those, you would click that better quality sleep. Everyone should click to fill nutritional gaps because that is the point of being here. We know that no matter how well we eat, that there are gaps that are not being filled because they're not available anymore. Our soil is depleted. Our air is depleted. Our agricultural processes in this country have changed the nutritional content of the food that we eat. So every single person should click that. Now, when it gets to energy level, do you have lulls throughout the day? Do you hit an afternoon slump? Do you wake up and feel tired? Um, do you... Are you exhausted by the time you hit your bed at night? Do you ever struggle at all with energy levels? You would click yes to this. Improved digestion. Do you suffer from gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, any type of bowel irregularity or heartburn? If you said yes to that, you click improved digestion. Do you have any particular condition whatsoever? That means if you have any symptom or diagnosis at all, you're going to click that. And then we're going to revisit that, that later in the assessment. Long-term health goals. Do you want to lose weight? Do you just want to feel better? Do you want to mitigate damage for later so that you don't have to worry about problems as you age? Then you're going to click yes to that. 
<laughs> immune support. Do you feel like you get sick frequently? Do you feel like if you're around somebody who's sick, you're most likely to pick it up? Do you feel that your immune system is in any way compromised? You would click yes to that. Do you have a high stress lifestyle? That could be a stressful job. It could be a stressful home life. It could be financial stress. It could be any type of stress that is affecting you because it's raising your cortisol and therefore it's raising your inflammation. And that's something that we need to address. Um, doctor recommendations, highly irregular that you would come here because a doctor recommended it. Generally speaking, the people working with us are working with us because their doctors have failed them and they're ready to take responsibility for their own health. But in the rare case that you are working with a functional medicine practitioner or a naturopath, who recommends that you use supplementation uh, or a chiropractor, then you can click yes to that question. Um, skin. Do you have eczema, psoriasis, vitiligo, cystic acne, anything that affects your skin, chronically dry skin, wrinkles that you want to improve, then you would click that. To fight premature aging, I think this is something we all want to do. And one of the things that my clients experience and that our team's clients experience is that we age backwards when we start doing the right things. Just because our physical age is progressing does not mean that our health needs to fall apart. And so often I hear people say, blah, 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 but it's normal for my age. Nothing is normal for your age. Any symptom is a sign that something is not right and we need to correct. Because you can be in your 80s, still riding horses, still climbing mountains. And I do have clients who do that. And we don't have to look a certain way for our age. Our skin is aging. Again, there's nutritional deficiencies and lifestyle factors that go into that. Um, if any of you saw the video that we posted about the 80-year-old carnivore, you'll see that she's 81 and she looks like she's 40 because she's taken great care of herself and she isn't exposed to those environmental toxins. She doesn't eat those processed foods. She sticks with her protein and amino acids that keep her skin regenerating and she's building new cells, organ cells, tissue, muscle cells, and skin cells all the time and her collagen levels are high. So just keep that in mind. I think we all want to fight premature aging and joint support. This would be if you have any level of stiffness, achiness, a joint injury, past injuries or surgeries to the joints that bother you or flare up. Or if you're the kind of person who says, oh, I can tell it's about to rain because my knees hurt, right? Uh, carpal tunnel, knee pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, back pain. This would all go under joint support. Okay. Next up, do you take a weekly dose of 50,000 IUs of vitamin D3 or more or vitamin D in general? If you're taking a single capsule 50,000 IU D2, you're going to stop that immediately. You're always going to answer no to this question because no matter what you're doing with your D3, you're going to replace it in your custom nutrition with a better, higher quality at the right amount for you. So the answer to that question is always no. But if you are taking that, you need to consult with your team member about the reasons why that is dangerous and you should never do that. There are times when we do high dose vitamin D based on genetics or based on a particular symptom or condition, but to take a single capsule of 50,000 IUs of D2 is one of the single stupidest things I have seen doctors do and one of the most dangerous. And we know that this leads to cancer and has a and very significant side effects. Next up, this is for women. Are you trying to conceive? Are you pregnant? Are you breastfeeding? And then lastly, do you suffer from premenopausal or perimenopausal symptoms like night sweats, hot flashes, mood swings, insomnia, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, or weight gain? If you are premenopausal or postmenopausal and symptomatic, you would click yes to this. Lastly, for women, are you currently using any form of hormone replacement therapy to manage your symptoms of menopause? This could include birth control or bioidentical hormone replacement or uh, synthetic HRT. You would click yes, but you need to write that down in your notes and consult again with your team member because when you take hormones, you tell your body not to make those hormones and you create a cascading negative effect. So while you might have short-term 
improvement of symptoms, you have long-term degradation of the endocrine system and will help you work on that as well. <laughs> if you are a man, the question that is going to come up in the men's section is going to be, do you have BPH, an enlarged prostate, or do you frequently urinate throughout the nighttime? And that would be the question that you would answer for men specifically. Moving on to the next section, we're done with personal and we're moving into dietary. And what's important here is that you write down three days of what you've eaten and drank and your symptoms and you hand that over to the person who's doing your review on our team so that we can take a look at what your day-to-day -day lifestyle looks like. It's really important from sunup to sundown that we understand what your schedule looks like. What time do you get up? Do you start with your coffee? I start my morning with my mojo. Do you have breakfast? Do you skip breakfast? What is a typical breakfast for you? When do you go to work? Um, what do you have for lunch? How do you feel throughout the day? Make sure that you write all of those things down, right down to what is your nighttime routine and what time do you go to bed? How well did you sleep? And did you have any symptoms? That could be joint pain. It could be autoimmune conditions uh, flaring up and you have symptoms from that. It could be that your blood pressure was high. Whatever you notice throughout the day, I want you to keep a log of that for at least three days for when you do your review with our team member so that we can help target the things that are going to be most effective for you. But we can also make sure that our recommendations fit into your lifestyle. That's going to lead to your highest and best success. So when you're thinking about servings of fruits, the palm of your hand is approximately four ounces. So how many times a day do you have the palm of your hand worth of fresh fruit? <laughs> it could be none. It could be one or two. It could be three or more. There's no right answer. Um, same with vegetables. I want to say, when you're talking about vegetables, white starches don't count. So you're not going to count your white potatoes, French fries, that kind of stuff. Colorful vegetables, green leafy vegetables, um, brassica vegetables, whatever it is, the palm of your hand, how many times a day do you get a serving of vegetables? <laughs> When we look at processed meats, we're looking at nitrates, we're looking at uh, cured meats, we are looking at uh, highly processed foods like your chicken nuggets, your lunch meats, um, bologna. If you're eating a, a nitrate-free, uncured bacon, you don't have to answer this. If you're eating crappy turkey bacon, you definitely have to answer yes to this because, oh, that's just gross. Um, and so bad, so bad for you. Um, but so do you eat this on a daily or near daily basis, at least three to four times a week, then you would click yes. How many times a week do you eat a cold water fatty fish or shellfish? Something that's going to be really high in DHA and EPA, your omega-3s, it's going to be anti-inflammatory. We try to get fish in at least twice a week. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. <laughs> Now, do you use a protein shake, a protein bar, or any type of meal replacement? And if so, how many times per week? Um, if you're using one of our recommendations, if you're using something else, just how many servings a week do you have? Um, I probably have two to three servings of my favorite amino acid protein um replacement it's not a meal replacement but it is for added protein in my diet I do it on purpose and then write down the brand snap a picture of the front and back of the label so that you can send that to your team member so that when they do your review we can look at the ingredients of that and make sure that it's aligned with what your goals are next up is sweeteners for the purpose of natural sweeteners in this question, we're looking at sugar, honey, maple syrup, agave would fall under this, and anything that contains corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, any kind of sweetener that is not a um, 
going to fit into the other the other category. So your aspartame and that kind of stuff, which I'll talk about in a second. So even things we know, whether they're good for us and they're nutritive sweeteners like honey and maple syrup, monk fruit stevia, those are our approved sweeteners, or it's organic cane sugar or regular sugar or whatever that is non-nutritive, highly inflammatory, you're going to lump those together. But you again, you're going to need to discuss and break that out. So write down what sweeteners, what preferred sweeteners you have and how many times a day you have it. Do you sweeten your coffee? Do you use a sweetened creamer in your coffee? That type of stuff so that you can review that. And that should be on your log of your daily intake. <laughs> um, I probably have stevia or monk fruit twice to three times a day there's some in my mojo already it's organic stevia there's some in my hydrate that's again organic stevia so again we're not fearful of those things it's just what we're we're consuming um now artificial sweeteners this is your sucralose your splenda your aspartame your erythritol your xylitol those are sugar alcohols and artificial sugars allulose fits under this <clears throat> And again, write down what it is and how much you're consuming when you do your log. Um, I don't consume any of those. So moving on. Now, trans fats. So if you cook in your home with canola oil, vegetable oil, soybean oil, corn oil, any of those things you've been lied to about them being um, heart healthy, which they are not, um, this is a trans fat. Margarine is a trans fat. These are synthetic fats that are very dangerous and highly inflammatory. If you're cooking in your home with um, avocado oil, coconut oil, real butter, real lard, um, real tallow from grass-fed beef, those are nutritive fats. They are uh, saturated or polyunsaturated fats that are good for you. And so that those do not count. Any industrialized seed oil is going to count in this question. And if you don't cook with those things at home, congratulations, but if you eat out, I guarantee you are consuming them when you eat out. So the way that I answer this question is usually how many times a week do you eat out where you can't control the seed oils that the restaurants are cooking your food with? And for me, I do eat out a couple times a week with the kids. And so there are times when I can't control the oils that are being used in my food. Do you follow a specific diet? Are you using restricted calories? Are you eating a ketogenic diet? Do you eat a high carb diet? Are you avoiding red meats? Do you eat a paleo diet? Um, are you using a, a thing like Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers or something along those lines. If you're on a diet that is not listed here, you would do none of the above. If you're eating a standard American diet, you would do I'm not on a diet plan. If, oh, there goes my stuff. Um, drop my mojo. If these apply to you, then click on the one that applies. But um, and I'm going to click on paleo because it's the closest thing to how I eat. If not, <clears throat> we're going to be able to ascertain what direction you need to go from that log that you're keeping. Next up is your sleep. How is your current sleep? And if you fall asleep easily, you stay asleep all night, you're getting between seven and nine hours of sleep, you're getting adequate REM, you're dreaming and you remember your dreams and you feel well refreshed when you wake up, you're going to click adequate. If you consistently get less than six hours of sleep, if you consistently feel tired when you wake, if you have a hard time falling asleep um, all the time, if you're waking up at the same time every night, then you're going to click inadequate. If you feel fatigued when you wake up, you're going to click inadequate. If you fall somewhere in the middle of that, you're going to do slightly inadequate. Um, how many alcoholic beverages do you consistently drink daily? If you never drink, you're going to click none. If you drink occasionally or socially, you're going to click fewer than one per day. And if you have a nightcap every night, you're going to click one, two, three, four, whatever it is that you are consistently having. Um, 
if you have ever been a smoker, I don't care if you quit 20 years ago, you're going to click X smoker because there are consistently things that we see in terms of nutrient deficiencies that help X smokers recover and things that X smokers should stay away from. If you have never smoked in your life, I do not smoke. And if you are a light smoker or a moderate smoker, heavy smoker, click the one that applies. This is cigarette smoke, cigars, pipes. Okay. Also, if you use a vape, click the, the amount of usage you have, the equivalent on that because the vapes are high in chemicals. What I'm not talking about is I'm not talking about marijuana use. It's about the only thing that gets eliminated. Um, unless you're using a marijuana vape and then it does because of the chemicals, but whatever. Um, are you regularly exposed to secondhand smoke at your home or at your place of business? Yes or no. Physical energy. Now, do you feel tired throughout the day? Does your energy wax and wane and go up and down? Do you have an afternoon slump? If you do, you'd click average. If you feel energetic all the time and you are like the energizer bunny, you're going to click very high. And if you actually feel fatigue, exhaustion, whether that's emotional or physical, you're going to click poor or continual physical exhaustion. Do you exercise for a living, right? Are you a college athlete? Are you a high school athlete? Or are you a professional athlete? That's what this is asking. If you exercise routinely daily uh, under normal conditions and you are not an elite level athlete, you would still click no. <clears throat> stress. I always tell people to manage their stress um, or, or to observe their stress on a 10 scale, where one is no stress, 10 is extreme. And figure out where you want to, where your day-to-day -day average is at this particular point in your life, right now. Is it none? Is it low? One, two, three? Is it moderate? Four, five, six, maybe seven? Or is it high? Eight, nine, ten. How would you describe your current level of mental energy? This is focus, clarity, concentration. Do you suffer from ADD or ADHD? Do you have a hard time concentrating? Do you forget where you put your keys or why you walked into a room? Do you have mom brain? Do you have any level of brain fog? If you have none, then it's very high. If you have some, then it's average. And if this is a constant issue for you is that you walk into a room and you don't know why you walked in there, you're constantly forgetting things, you're going to do poor or continuous mental exhaustion, which affects your quality of life. <clears throat> your height. Um, I'm just going to put in an average woman, five, seven, and an average height. Uh, or in an average weight. Again, estimate, it doesn't have to be exact, but it needs to be close. Um, I don't need you to run out and weigh yourself, but to give us an idea of your size so that your nutrition is adequate for you. Um, joint health. So this is if you are not taking medication, you're not taking non anti-inflammatories over the counter, you're not taking supplementation for your joints. How do your joints feel? Um, do you have no joint pain? Do you have intermittent pain, meaning it comes and it goes, then it would be periodic? Or is that joint pain all the time and then you would click continuous? And then bone health. There are only two answers for this, even though there are three options. No one ever should click satisfactory but concerned about calcium intake. Why? Because calcium is not the problem with bone loss. Magnesium and vitamin D are the problem with calcium absorption. We all get enough calcium. You've been lied to if you've been told you need to take a calcium supplement. But if you have bone density issues that you know of, whether that's osteopenia or osteoporosis, you're going to click poor. If you have any other issue, it's going to be optimal, no concerns. So only if you know that you have osteoporosis or osteopenia do you click poor. Otherwise, you click optimal, optimal and you move on. We will address 
bone in the recommendations, bone density in the recommendations based on actual symptoms, actual diagnosis, and actual nutrition, which are eating those types of things, as well as family history and genetics. Um, but calcium is not the issue. And so no one should click, I'm concerned about calcium intake. And we talk more about that in, in Bedrock Nutrition. And if you have questions about that, that's something to discuss with your team member. Um, are you concerned about your immune system? This could be, I travel a lot. I get sick frequently. I'm a teacher or a nurse and I'm surrounded by people. I get low sleep, lots of stress. So my immune system is suppressed. You'd click yes. Everybody else can click no. Um, digestive problems. Again, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, any of these things. If it never happens, then you click no. If it happens occasionally, you click low. If it's something you battle with a lot, you're going to click um, moderate. And if it's something that happens every day or every other day, you're going to click high. Okay. <laughs> then we get to conditions. These are going to be all of the symptoms and diagnoses that you have. So let's say that you have, um, let's say, let's say you've got ADHD and you've got high blood pressure or um, I'm going to do asthma. Um, let's say, okay, so under, if you type in high, you're going to see high blood pressure, high blood sugar, uh, high cholesterol. Um, again, if you think you have high cholesterol, you need to put your total cholesterol, your HDL and your triglyceride level together and give those to your team member. So we can explain to you what we're actually looking at because the numbers you get from your doctor are not accurate. And what we're mostly concerned about is this high triglyceride level or when your HDL is too low. It's not a matter of high cholesterol and, and that gets explained in Bedrock Nation very, very clearly. But put in here what you've been told Put in here what you think your problems are. And if you have symptoms that are outliers of that, like joint pain, et cetera, you're going to find those. So um, you can choose to go A, B, C and go through all of them and see what applies. Or you can type them in. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put hypertension in here. I'm going to put ha Hashimoto thyroiditis and let's say migraines and then just keep in mind that some of these things appear in more than one place. If you have it one time, you don't need to repeat it. So let's say you put in uh, type 2 diabetes under T, and then it comes in as diabetes type 2 under D. You only need one of them. Don't, don't um, compound the same uh, diagnosis more than once. Um, if you have anxiety or depression or um, cognitive decline, like memory issues that falls under cognitive decline, joint pain falls under joint, a uh, joint inflammation, or I'm sorry, joint discomfort and inflammation are some of the options. So you want to go through and click anything and everything that applies to you. Just don't double them up. Now, when you move into your medications, your medications might appear under their name brand or they might appear under the generic, or they might not appear if they don't have a specific nutrient that they block, they prevent absorption of, or that would help the medication to work better if it was present. So um, if for whatever reason you cannot find it in the notes that you send after you finish this to your team member you're going to list out every one of your medications the dosage and the time of day you take it and you're going to send that over so that we can go in and make sure that this is adequate in case you couldn't find it in case it was listed under something differently we're going to make sure that that is adequately represented in your um, assessment so moving on. Oh, you know what? I do want to show you something when I get to this. So let's go back to medical for just a second. I'm going to go ahead and put some things in here. So we know that this person has Hashi's. We know that this person has migraines and high blood pressure. So when we move, I'm going to put in a blood pressure medication.
And again, you can go alphabetically or you can just type in a few letters and then find it. Now, if you've already done a genetic test with us, your genetics results would go here. If you haven't and you're going to order one, keep in mind that when you order your DNA test, you'll get the results in roughly two to four weeks. And then you'll come back to this screen in the edit section under your assessment and add this in later. So you would click no right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assume that I know what's going on because I wanna show you what it's gonna trigger. Um, there's an increased inflammatory risk for this person. They have standard vitamin A requirements. They have re slightly reduced vitamin D requirements, standard vitamin E, increased B6 needs, increased folate needs, and increased B12 needs because they have MTHFR, MTRR. Um, Okay, so now you get to your results. The very first thing I want you to do is to scroll all the way to the bottom and ignore the entire results section because this is going to change after your review with your team member. But we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you're going to see a screen that says save for later. Save assessment for later, you click on this. And you are going to put in your, oops, your information, first name, last name, gender, birthday are already populated because you already added that. Put in your phone number. Your email address. Um, and then create a username. Now your username is going to be the first initial of your last name the first initial of your first name, your last name. And if that's not available, then the last two numbers of your date of birth. So in this case, and of course, why isn't that available? Okay, there it goes. Get it auto-populated. So uh, in this case, it's S patient 67, and then I'm gonna create a password. Now your password, until you're ready to finish up your process is going to be all lowercase, the letter I, come on, D, L, I, F, E, so for ID Life, and then the number one, two, three, four, okay? This is gonna allow your team member to be able to help you optimize your nutrition recommendations after they've reviewed your assessment. And then you can go back and change your password with your team member when you place your first order. Then you're gonna re-enter the password and prove that you are not a robot and hit save. Write that down so you have it, write it down so your associate has it and save it so that you can return to it later. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna show you some features that are in here that you can begin to look at before you do your review. So if ever you need to update your assessment, you're not gonna take a new one. You're gonna click edit and you're gonna go through and compare what you answered before to how you feel now and make changes. If a medication drops out, if a symptom goes away, if a new symptom appears, that's how you're gonna edit it. And it's gonna save your old one and it's gonna save your new one so that we can go back and compare. When you wanna go back to your results or you wanna change something or order, you click view results. So I'm gonna go back in here and show you some highlights of things that you can do while you're waiting for your review with your team member. First of all, you're gonna notice that you have a health score. That's a, a score based on a hundred scale that tells you just how the computer interprets your answers in terms of risk. <laughs> Ideally, we wanna see this 80 
to 90 or higher. I've never seen anyone with a perfect score. Um, but our goal is that each time we meet, every quarter when we update this, that this number is gonna improve. Your health report, which will download, um, it'll download a secondary report, which you can then open is going to explain that health score. And it's gonna give you the reasons it weighted some of your answers the way that it did. So what, where do you have higher amounts of risk? And this can be anywhere from six to 16 pages of data. It is not going to recommend any supplementation. It's just gonna tell you from an observational standpoint where you stand right now. That is printable, it is downloadable, it is savable. And again, you'll get one every time you update your report. Okay, this view supplement facts is going to be your FAQ after you've determined what the appropriate nutrition for you is. It's going to have all of the data, the RDA, what time of day you take it, how much there is, and what form of each micronutrient is available in your nutrition. We're not going to look at that right now. I want you to pay attention to this legend. There will be four types of recommendations. The core are the things that the computer picks out simply are very easily um, applicable to you. Sometimes we use these, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we find that there's more appropriate ways to allocate your funds to get a higher output and efficacy from your nutrition. The advanced are going to be things that are very specific to your diagnosis, your symptoms, the things you told us about you. This is what's really targeting each and everything you pointed out. The premium are going to be convenience items. These are things you can put in your nutrition or purchase out of your nutrition that are just going to make your life a little bit easier. Um, sometimes they're, they're warranted. Sometimes they're uh, just things that help you reach your goals faster. And then the optionals are gonna be things out of the a la carte menu that maybe we add because we know you need them, but they weren't triggered necessarily by the computer. Also, if there's something that you in particular wanna take more of or are looking for that wasn't triggered by the assessment, sometimes you can go back and add those things in. And I'm going to do a second video on how to arrange your nutrition yourself so that you're getting the most out of it. But at this point, I wanna stop I want to send you back to your associate and team member so that you can review one-on-one -on -one with them and discuss each of these things. As you look at the recommendations, you will notice that there is a Y button that is going to tell you what you answered that triggered that and why it's relevant to you. Under each Y, there is an evidence line, and that's going to list anywhere from one to 10 studies specific to that thing and why it's necessary for you or why it's recommended for you. This top um, paragraph is going to explain what it is and then you can X yourself out of that and go right back into your assessment. Each one is gonna have a why. Each one is going to have an add remove button and each one is going to have an increase and decrease in quantity. And when we go over with you individually, your recommendations, you will see these things come into play. And then in video two, I will talk about this for future as a customer when you want to make changes to your own nutrition. So I am going to sign off right now. Congratulations on taking your assessment. Please make sure you now connect with your Team Bedrock associate.